Hi everyone, welcome back. This is What's In My Makeup Bag, Spring Edition 2019. I'm filming this in Heckfield Place, I'm not at home. I'm on an overnight stay with La Roche-Posay because they're launching a really lovely new product, but I'll try that and I'll get back to you. This is about makeup. And so we'll go back to the start without any of this on and um, see what I've been using. There are two foundations in my makeup bag at the moment. One that I have only just really started testing, which is L'Enchal from Guerlain. And the other one is the Clinique Even Better Refresh, which I have tested to the nth degree, really like, uh, spoke about it in a previous video. And I'm just sort of doing my final tests on it before I write it up for my website. So I'll show you what this looks like on. So this is in a plastic tube and it's a really very sort of moisturizing, glowy foundation from Clinique. So like a medium to full coverage. It's not full coverage like Estee Lauder double wear kind of thing by any stretch of the imagination, but it's it's there, it's got coverage look, it's pretty robust. If you have dry skin and you want a slightly fuller cover that doesn't dry your skin out, then it's really, really lovely. So on the other side of my face, I'm gonna show you uh, the Guerlain foundation, which is just launched quite recently. Comes in an incredibly heavy glass bottle. Now this is supposed to be like a really fresh wear, sheer kind of foundation, um, but with long wear. So sheer, but doesn't just fly off your face at the first sign of, of danger. This one is a much, much lighter coverage. However, it feels really light and fresh going on. If you like the Guerlain Lingerie foundation, then this is a, a, feels much lighter and fresher than that even. And you think that the coverage is gonna be really, really rubbish on it, as in, you know, barely there, like one of these sheer tints almost. But in fact, it's slightly better than you imagine. Really quick to apply, very fresh and glowy, very, very lightweight. So for people who don't like the feel of makeup, who don't like to look like they're wearing makeup, it's a really nice one. It's sort of like a tinted moisturiser without the heft of the moisturiser part. So it feels very nice and, and dewy, not as much as the Clinique one, but you've got that little bit of coverage as well. So it's, it's sort of perfect, no makeup, makeup really. It's lighter than lingerie de peau and it's fresher in feel. I'm just gonna even it out slightly by applying a tiny bit of the Clinique over the top only because I got to film a whole video and I don't want to look back on it when I edit and think, oh for goodness sakes, why didn't I sort that out? Okay, so gone over with the Clinique. You can see that just even on the circles underneath the eyes, it's just that bit more comprehensive, isn't it? And it feels bouncy and lovely. Guerlain again. Oh, something I do have to say, the Clinique foundation, unfragranced obviously, because it's Clinique. This one from Guerlain does have a bit of fragrance. It's very pleasant, completely pointless, of course, but if you hate fragrance in foundation, that won't be for you. If you love a bit of luxurious fragrance, then, um, then you'll like it. And so there we have the Guerlain. I don't know why I keep going on with this. This is the Terracotta Light, and it's not really dark enough on me to, to sort of do anything that snazzy. But actually, I quite like the fact that I just keep sweeping it over with this big Saku brush. And um, it just gives this really sort of subtle, healthy effect, which I don't know whether that's showing up on camera, but it's that, that very French, undone, sort of, you haven't done anything to your face kind of look that you get. And it's because it's a combination of a really, really light, multicolored bronzer. So it's got coral in there and it's got a few different shades and they've all got a little bit of a sheen, but it's so, so light. It's sort of like a shade or two darker than my skin tone. So nothing that dramatic. So it's a combination of that and then this really, really soft, fluffy face brush from Saku. It's incredibly expensive, but if I ever want that just barely there, haven't got any makeup on look, which is the one I go for most, then that is the best face brush that I have for doing that because it's just so, it's like a cloud. It's just so, so soft. But I will endeavor to find something similar because it, I mean, it is 
it's like a professional investment brush you know it's not something you just go and pick up in your lunch break but if you love soft barely there looks then it's something that will last you a lifetime and you'll always get that that gorgeous finish so it's just really diffused look there's no hard lines you can't really tell that I'm wearing bronzer it's just it's just subtle so that's that next on the agenda I'm going to do a bit of glow so this is from Topshop and they just sent this to me the other day, but I've always been a fan of these glow pots that they do. And um, I've used this, I've featured this before, in fact. This is the glow pot in Polished, and it's just a really subtle, I'm doing it on my nose there just because it shows up in the light where I'm sitting. So just a really subtle, subtle glow. Um, we've been talking a lot about grown up glows, haven't we? Or I have, maybe I've been talking to myself. Ones that don't give you that sort of frosted, um, powdery finish. Just taking a tiny bit along the tops of the cheekbones, underneath the, the brow. You know, so cream formulas, really. Chanel have come out with a brilliant one, which is in a stick. Multi-usage sticks from Chanel. And there's a transparent one. Is that that one? I think this one might be the one with glow. It's really hard to tell them apart, actually. Yeah, this is the one with glow. So there's a transparent one, which is really good, which is basically like a very um, sort of durable Vaseline effect. So you know if makeup artists put Vaseline on the eyelids or on here, and it gives that gorgeous dewiness, but it comes off after no time at all. It's like that, but it's got longevity, and it's really moisturising. This one has got a slight sort of shimmer and shine to it so this one's not so low-key but still very gorgeous and chic and understated but the glow pop from Topshop in Polished is great you know cheap and cheerful they sent this eyeshadow and I thought this is interesting because it's a really peachy orangey shade it's not going to be for everyone but look the pigment is amazing well now I feel like I need to wear this because how am I going to go over that I haven't even got any makeup remover with me you know, if you were wearing that in the right way, I think that it would look really, really cool. But guess what the shade name is? Clown. I find that really off-putting. Clowns are not chic. They're not something we aspire to look like. So I just think it's a really strange shade name. But you know, most beauty brands have really strange shade names, so it's nothing new. Okay, so this is Glowgasm, Dreamgasm from Charlotte Tilbury. And it's her usual quad setup. So you have your sort of base shadow, which is always really glowy and gorgeous. And I always tend to start that from the inside corner. Hopefully clown isn't going to make my eyes too different. You have your next one along. So you move in a clockwise direction and I use a big, fat, fluffy brush and I just apply that to the other half of the lid and then out towards the eyebrow. I mean, so slapdash. This is not how Charlotte Tilbury intended for them to be used, I'm sure. Ruth Crilly just with her massive big bulldozer eye brush. And then, moving round, you have your smoking, smoky, smoking shade. So that's the dark one. This one you can pretty much ignore, really. It takes no effort. So the smoky one, what I tend to do is take like a triangle in the corner. So I haven't really got the right brush for this, but I Take a little V underneath the eye. That's a very warm palette, this one. So it might not be for you. But um, I think it's really gorgeous. And then on top of the eye, I sort of work it into the crease there. And then hope that it, it kind of joins up. So it just elongates the eye a little bit. For a low-key smoke. But you know... These palettes, you can use them as wildly or as subtly as you want to, depending on what look you're going for. And then, so that's been in my makeup bag and I've been faffing about with that loads. I'm just going to use a liner, just an old um, brown eyeliner from Chanel. Now look, I do feel like this Dreamgasm is not going to... It's a tricky one to use. It is tricky. 
It's warm, it's orangey. I think it looks amazing, but it's not the easiest. Um, I also have vintage vamp here, look, and those are much more plummy, purpley tones. So if I show you, for example, this, the two dark ones underneath the eyes, you can instantly see that that's an easier, an easier shade to wear. I have to say, actually, if there was going to be one, if I had to pick one quad from Charlotte Tilbury, I think it would be Vintage Vamp. I just think it's really easy, but it's got these sort of nice plummy tones that make it look a little bit more, a little bit more interesting and glamorous. Okay, so starting off with a low-key eye and now all of a sudden I've got a smoky eye. Mascara, uh, the Dior Pump and Volume is the one that I have in my bag at the moment and it's just really thick, really volumizing, really sort of clagging and tarry and amazing. You've got rubbish lashes. It's like an instant fix. Okay, I have to neaten those up in a second. Eyebrows, I've got the old trusted gimme brow from Benefit which is one I always use, still haven't found a better one. I have to say I do like Boy Brow from um, Glossier, but it's very, very waxy. And if you go wrong with it, it's almost like you can't find that you can't correct it. Whereas Gimme Brow, you can get a Q-tip or earbud, whatever you call them, and you can sort of go back through, take some away, and redo them a bit, but I find that you can't really do that with, with the boy brows, so it's, it's less forgiving. But I have to say I've been fascinated by this microblading thing. Microblading? Is that what it's called? Um, that people are having done. Where you get that feathery, lovely effect, and then you don't have to ever do your brows, and they always look amazing. It does make a big difference to your face doing brows, like even just grooming them like this. I don't know whether this is going to ruin the whole thing. Let's use the Topshop blush, and it's uh, the matte powder blush in Game Changer. And I'm going to still use my wispy brush because I just want the lightest touch of this. It's there. Really, really a whisper of blush, but. I think the Topshop products are really pigmented. They're really, really good. Because I've got eyeliner all over my eyelid and I don't have any makeup remover, I'm just gonna have to draw over the clumps with a black eyeliner. Oh, the Glamour, this is the Highliner from Marc Jacobs. I think these are some of the best eyeliners you can get. I don't often bother with anything else because Everything else seems to dry up and just this is just in black. I, I don't know the shade, but if you look for a black one, it'd be this. I find that a lot of the others just dry up and they don't go on very silkily. Uh, and this is really easy to blend if you get in there early. But once it's set, you have no chance. And seeing that I'm there, I'm just going to draw a little tiny flick up from the corner of my eye upwards just to correct my little bit of droopiness that's going on there. Okay, so now if it was just me and I wasn't filming and I was just, that was it, I was on my own, I would stop there. I wouldn't probably, I'd use some lip balm because I like the undone look. However, I don't have any lip balm with me, I don't think. And um, I want to show you this lip crayon, which is the Topshop lip liner. And it's just really long lasting, so, I pop a tiny bit there, I don't go all the way around the lips, and then on the top lip, I just go slightly over, and then I rub it back down. So it's just a real hint of, of overline, just in the cupid's bow. And it just seems to make them look a little bit fuller. So it's two tiny swipes of, of lip pencil, and that's it. 
and all of a sudden, I mean, I could just, I could just leave it like that. They're just a tiny bit bee stung. And I could just leave it like that, but my lips feel really dry, so I'm just gonna put some really matte lipstick on. That'll help. Uh, this is Sensual Matte from Dior, which is a little bit peachy and sort of a beigey peach. And that is all I'm doing. I say all, it's taking me about an hour. Bloody hell. Um, so that's what's in my makeup bag. Hope that you've enjoyed that. If there are any individual reviews or sort of before and after pictures that you'd like of any of those products, then let me know in the comments and I will try and do that for you. Um, otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.